why, why are black people ashamed to make black music? We ain't, we ain't ashamed to make black babies. We, we expect that when we have children, they're going to be black. Are we ashamed of that? So why can we take that a step farther and say that when we produce art, when we create and express ourselves as black, that's our lifestyle. Kendrick Lamar just released his latest album, To Pimp a Butterfly. It's been getting a lot of reviews in the streets, a lot of buzz on social media, people saying it's the album, album of the year already. What's your take on it, man? Is it, did it live up to the hype when you finally uh, listened to it, or were you disappointed? No, I, I definitely wasn't disappointed. It's, it's definitely a good album, man. You know, somebody like me who's been listening to, to Kendrick Lamar since I first heard up, heard about him. You know, what I'm saying it's it's definitely a good album. Uh, nothing shocking, nothing shocking. You know, what I'm saying like people were uh, ranting and raving about Good Kid, Mad City because it was a dope album. It, it deserved a lot of the accolades and uh, the acclaim that it got. But to me, to Pimple Butterfly, which kind of him going back to Section 8, you know, uh, what I liked the most about uh, the Pimple Butterfly was uh, just, you know, the blackness of it. You know what I'm saying? To me, black music is a genre. It, it might not be something that people recognize or, you know, saying so you can't go to your, you can't go on your iTunes and be like, I mean, I'm gonna search for black uh, black music because it ain't that ain't something that people recognize. But to me, that's definitely a category of music, and, and it's just a black album. And you know what I like most about it, you know, say so people look at him like a hip hop artist, but if you listen to him, you notice that he has a a, a, a few influences. And so on this album, you can feel the uh, the original black music in America, jazz. You can feel that heavily in. Spoken word, you know what I'm saying? If you don't know nothing about the last poets and Gil Scott Heron or Saul Williams, he bring that dynamic to the album. And then of course with him being the person that he is growing up in LA and being inspired by that sound that came out of LA when hip hop well, was taken over by the LA and West Coast scene, you can hear the funk in there. And that's something that I feel like, you know, their parents you know what I'm saying? Kind of, you know, gave them growing up. They got to listening to Sly Stone and uh, Parliament and George Clinton and all these bands filled with all these musicians that just gave that big sound. And so, when I, like I say, when I think about the album, I think about just how black it is. Because he, he, Kendrick Lamar is the type of artist that is a, an all inclusive artist. He's going to give you um he's gonna give you the, the 16s well he don't even really write 16s hardly but he's gonna give you the bars for all the hip-hop heads and for everybody else that's just interested in more than hip-hop he's gonna give you other elements of it and he's gonna include as many like it's on that album you barely see where it's just one producer on there he gonna he, he used a team of producers to create a sound to add this uh, come work with this producer, do this, do that, you know what I'm saying? And he does that, man, even on a lot of those tracks, you know what I'm saying? He, man, he gives credit to who's doing backgrounds and vocals and everything, but it's, you know, it's a lot of people on there, you know what I'm saying, just giving a, giving a little, a, a few notes here and there, or strumming the instrument here and there, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, you know what I'm saying, what a musician does, that he has an ear for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some people might consider it to be uh, too much, too much of, of this on every song because, you know, he didn't stick to the format. People say, man, uh, the average listener ain't listen to a song longer than three minutes. I don't think, besides maybe one interlude, he might have one song that fits in that three to three minute, 30 seconds type thing. Because, like I say, man, he's he's doing his own thing. He's, he's flowing as an artist. Uh, 
I mean, one thing I heard about it that I just it really kind of just rubbed me the wrong way was like, uh, the album is unapologetically black. How would the, how should his white audience, his white fans respond to this? Listen to it. You know what I'm saying? That's how you should respond to it. Listen to it. If you know black people and you're white or you know people of other races and cultures, listen to it. Maybe this will be give you some type of uh, education on what it's like for him or other people that are similar to him that have similar experiences. Why, why are black people ashamed to make black music? We ain't, we ain't ashamed to make black babies. We, <laughs> we expect that when we have children, they're gonna be black. Are we ashamed of that? So why can we take that a step farther and say that when we produce art, when we create and express ourselves as black, that's our lifestyle. That's what I like about them, man, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it's album of the year because it's early on and I respect artists. I respect other hip hop artists. And you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's gonna be the dopest thing out this year, but I'm definitely saying it's a good album. It's definitely worth checking out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, let me ask you this. Because a lot of people say that hip hop was, was stagnant last year. Mm -hmm. And you know, with the release of this album, Kendrick Lamar, it kind of you know woke hip hop back up. I mean, do you think he's carrying hip hop on his back? You know, right now? Nah, I wouldn't say carrying hip hop on his back, but he's amongst a group of uh, what we can call the, lead, the leaders of this new school who, you know what I'm saying, they carrying the baton for hip hop. It's a few people that I could name, you know what I'm saying, that I listen to, you know what I'm saying, through the past year and drop albums that you might not compare them to Kendrick Lamar, but they definitely are doing their part to preserve what the essence of hip hop is all about. You know, uh, Kendrick Lamar is doing something with hip hop right now that the majority aren't doing. He's forcing us to think in a in a in an era of hip hop music where the music is discouraging you to think and just to be carefree. As people, we cannot allow that type of music to be all that we listen to because that's not the reality for us. If if we all walked around not thinking and just being carefree, how much would we get accomplished? And I'm not saying that those artists don't put time, thought, and effort into it, but I'm just saying that at the end of the day, how many people can do what Kendrick Lamar does versus how many people can recreate a sound and a style that they've heard on the radio right now. That's, that, that's gonna be a big difference. The reason why is because it happens all the time on YouTube. As soon as something happens in the news, somebody creates a song and it's getting millions and millions of plays. As soon as something happens in current events that might be funny or whatever, you know, we got, we got artists like Ice J.J. Fish that got 50 million views on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar's getting 50 million views with songs like King Kunta. My favorite song on the album, by the way, is uh, How Much Is A Dollar. I love that song. I love the music on there, everything. Everything that was composed and arranged in the, in, in it, in the lyrics, well thought out, and it was a great song. It was something that took a lot more effort than what you uh, normally here on the radio and so you know what I'm saying the album is lyrically powerful and that's what we don't hear in the mainstream and he just so happened to have that stamp to where he can go out there and people don't expect him to to necessarily uh, follow a certain pattern or a certain type of style to be successful he does what he does and he has the, 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 the uh, musical freedom the freedom to do that. He doesn't have the label all about his back telling him to do this and do that. They trust him enough, you know? So, so let's let's talk about the pot comparisons, man. I mean, Kendrick Lamar, uh, he's he's giving us a variety of music, you know? He, he's giving us that music that we can buy by heads to, and, you know, 
just vibe to, you know, and then he's giving that music that, that makes us sit back, you know, think about our blackness, reevaluate some things, you know, kind of similar to, to pop, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it fair to compare him to pop? You know, is he the modern day Tupac or is other 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 comparisons are they, are they being made prematurely? Man, look, this is what I'm gonna say about that. You know, with all respect to Kendrick Lamar, br like brilliant artist, he should never ever compare himself to Tupac. Nobody ever, ever should compare Kendrick Lamar to Tupac. Tupac was a different artist. He was a different man. He was a different mind. Tupac gave you the full, the, he gave you the whole circle. He could uplift you. He could go party. He could talk bad to you. He could kick some knowledge to you. He could talk about this subject and talk about that subject. He created his own image and brand to the point where we respected whatever he did artistically because that's just another side of Tupac. And, that, and, and, that, and he gave you and he gave you all his sides. He was way more relatable in that way too. Because he came, Pac came at you like this. You, there are so many songs that people can just quote the lyrics to his song to because he gave it to you like this. Kendrick Lamar, his style, man, a lot of people can't do what he does. I, I like his delivery and I like how he switches up and plays with his voice. But the only reason why he's getting comparisons is because when it comes to flipping subject matters and talking about uh, our community and being revolutionary and with the type of music that he does, that's why you get the comparison because nobody's gotten that same type of attention in the mainstream uh, industry since Tupac did it. You know what I'm saying? You had artists like uh, Most Def, Common, Dead Prez, Talib Kweli, who all had that message of trying to uplift people, but they didn't get that mainstream love. They were dubbed as the conscious rappers. You had those rappers who gave you gangster music. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that Tupac got categorized in too. But that's all that they gave you. So they were known as gangster rappers. Nobody called Pac a gangster rapper. Tupac is too Pac. That's it. He just gave you like, you know what I'm saying? He just gave you the story of somebody who was raised poor by a revolutionary who was blessed enough to have the arts in their life at an early age, move to another coast, get involved in the gang life and the thug life and all that struggle. And then when they have an opportunity to get in front of you, tell you that whole story. That's why he created his own lane. Don't compare him to Pac. Kendrick Lamar was, is heavily influenced by Pac. The, the first name of this album was called Two Pimp A Caterpillar. Two Pimp A Caterpillar. Two Pac. So obviously he's he's somebody that's heavily influenced by Tupac, which I mean, how could he not be being somebody that loves the MC and loves hip hop music growing up in LA? He's a, Tupac is an icon out there. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's from New York and lived in Baltimore is an LA icon. Tupac first name when he first rapped was MC New York. But LA has has taken Tupac, took Tupac to another level and they claim him as his own. That's when you know a man is more than just his music. And it doesn't even matter that he ain't even really originally from your community. And he lived a good 10 years out there, out of his life. And y'all claim him as a, your own because that's how powerful he is. Kendrick Lamar is not Tupac, but he doesn't have to be Tupac. Just like Kobe didn't have to be Jordan. And LeBron, likewise. Just like Adrian Peterson ain't got to be Emmitt Smith or Walter Payton. They all kind of have to build their own lanes, you know what I'm saying? And what, what Kendrick Lamar is doing right now with music is great, you know what I'm saying? Like, right now, people wanted to hear an album like this, an album that was filled with uh, revolutionary rhetoric, the struggle. I love being black, you know what I'm saying? I am black. I want to show you that I'm black. You know, they, they put the memes up 
when he when he uh, people were listening to the album and they, they showed a meme of a, a guy and a girl like dancing in the club like you know what I'm saying she twerking on the guy after you listen to the Pimple Butterfly they got on their dashikis you know what I'm saying it was perfect timing honestly because all of a sudden you you had a lot of people who were trendy activists in the past year with the with the tragedies of Mike Brown and Eric Garner and so much other injustice in the news people were ready to have that self pride again. They were, and now they're ready for the music to also portray that because that's what's going on in the world right now. And people are not afraid of being black right now. They're not afraid to think. They're not afraid to be who they truly are. He just put an album out as all of this was happening. He was ha happening to be recording it. So it's no wonder that he put this album out right then. Last three years, there's many things that we can name that went on to where we felt like, okay, maybe it's time to stop dancing so much and maybe we need to think and say something about what's going on in the world other than turning up, having fun, and whatever else you hear on the